What's up everyone, welcome back to FM Scout and in uh, today's tactics test video we're going to be having a look at the good bar tactic from NAP. So here we are then guys, so before we begin please make sure to subscribe, like the video and comment as well if you are using this tactic or any other uh, tactics that were created by NAP and then afterwards if you've got time go in the description and uh, go and have a look at my channel, alright, Tucker Jobs, I also got Twitch and everything like that so check all them out as well. Right then, so to the tactic, as you can see it's a 4-2-3-1 but it's a deep 4-2-3-1 with the two attacking Volantes, it's actually a very attacking tactic to be fair, shadow strikers inside forwards, advanced forwards, Volantes all on the attacking duty so it's going to be interesting to see what this is like. So the teams taking part in this tactic guys is Man U, Leeds, PSG, Brest, Atletico Madrid, uh, Vallecano, Middlesbrough, Bolton and Tranmere. So as usual you've got some top teams, elite teams, underdogs and lower leagues as well for this test. Um, if you want to download it guys and you can download it the uh, link is in the description. Alright it will take you over to FM Scout where you can download this tactic. If you can't download we'll go through all the instructions now. So advance forward, inside forward left, inside forward right, shadow striker. Volante left, Volante right, wing back left, wing back right, ball playing defender left, ball playing defender right, and the sweep keeper, set piece instructions, corners, defend him right and left, and attacking left and right, and the take it is aiming for the near post guys, free kicks, defend him right and left, and attacking left and right, and finally throw ins, defend him right and left. And attacking left and right, and it's the uh, long beer wolf 442 throw in systems, guys. Obviously, you can actually download just set piece instructions you don't have to actually download all of the uh, tactic if if you want to do that but uh, it's advisable to use the whole lot obviously um so to the uh, tactical style then it is an attacking mentality in possession fairly wide attack and width of overlapping on the left and right will play out defense on the approach play shorter passing directness with a higher tempo low crosses in the final third and um, work ball into box in transition counter press and counter and your goalkeeper is distributing to the full packs by throwing it long and then out of possession you're using the offside track with a much higher line of engagement standard defensive line uh, defensive width is a force opposition outside and then much more often on the trigger press would prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So there we go. There's the tactic, instructions, teams. Let's get on with the test and see what the results hold for us at the end of the season. Now let's get started in the Premier League then. End of the season, guys. And as you can see, Manu did uh, end up coming first in the Premier League. 94 points. So they finished six points above second place. Liverpool and Leeds being the mid ish table team uh, not too bad for them either guys third place and champions league football and they did fairly well all right they're three points above chelsea uh, scored more goals obviously on the goal difference 46 only one below liverpool so overall yeah not too bad for leeds uh, if we go and have a look at the player stats obviously it's ronaldo top in the goal charts with 34 league goals average rating you got fernandez and Telles, both man manchester united players uh, 7.82 and 6.5 and then assists you got fernandez and rashford again so it's mostly man U when it comes to the uh, top three player stats but player of the matches you have got Rafinha coming second there with nine and Fernandez getting eight and then clean sheets Meslier nice for Leeds getting 17 coming second with David De Gea getting 15 so yeah not too bad when it comes to player of the matches and clean sheets Leeds did actually do better individually than uh, Manchester United so first let's go to Manu's competitions and how did they do Oh, they didn't win out. <laughs> That's a shame. Obviously, cup games can be a bit of a gamble, even on tactics tests. But yeah, they got to the final of the Champions League. Uh, they went Actually, it was PSG that won it. So we'll have a look at PSG's stats a bit later because they're obviously using the same tactic. They are a part of this test. But yeah, 4-2 in the final. That's such a shame. English FA Cup went out in the fifth round against West Brom and then knocked out in the quarter final of the Carabao Cup by Liverpool. So it's a shame, but no matter how good your tactic is, you're always going to have some those bad games those bad days and it happens in real life of course it's going to happen in the game as well um so yeah unfortunately it's just the league that they won this time around guys obviously you know my tactics six tests we do it one go all right we don't redo it again and again and again so everyone gets amazing results end of the day they haven't won any silverware just won the league 
Let's go to the squad then. So best player was Fernandez, 15 goals, 32 assists in all competitions for him. Cristiano Ronaldo coming just after. Biggest goal scorers was Ronaldo though, 47. Pogba with 15. You got Fernandez there with 15. You got a lot of players actually scoring double digits, and you would do. You've got attacking volunteers, so that's why Pogba's going to score. That's why Van der Beek's going to score. You got shadow strikers, that's why Fernandez is going to score. The inside forwards, you got the Greenwoods and the Rashfords on those left and right, and that's why they're going to score, and that's why the all picked up the 10, 11, 12, 13 goals. So, yeah, they've done really, really well. The biggest creators in the team, Fernandez and Sancho, 32 and 15. Uh, if we go to the full numbers, then it was 182 goals. Now, that isn't bad. I know, man, you are a good team. I know Ronaldo scores a lot of goals, but 182 goals on a one striker system is actually really, really good. Um, 55 goals conceded, which is not too bad. Not too bad. It's not the best I've seen, but it's not too bad. Um, if we go to the data hub then, all right, last match passes then. So this was the last match pass map with the uh, against PSG. And you can actually kind of see the shape of how it's going. You've got the shadow striker there sitting just behind the striker. You've got the inside forwards coming up, obviously. Uh, Greenwood's a little bit more forward. In this case, on this game, all right, it does change a little bit on the pass map. Just gives you a little indication of how uh, or where your players are going to be and how they're passing. Um, you've got the attacking Volantis staying central this time around. They did lose, so I'm guessing that Manchester United were forced a little bit back uh, compared to how they would do against other teams. We will have a look at uh, PSG's pass map. Because bear in mind, PSG's last pass match is going to be this game as well. So we'll see how their pass map is compared to Manchester United's. Um, so yeah, overall though, it's a nice solid shape. Not too bad. Uh, so uh, nice one there. And obviously on the general performance, they've done really, really well. So yeah, nice one. All right, let's go to Leeds. Uh, let's see if they won any competitions then. No, but they did get to the semi-final of the Caribbean Cup. But at the end of the day, with a team like Leeds coming third is best case scenario. Coming second, best, coming first is the best case scenario. Let's get it right. But third for a team like Leeds in a tactics test is really, really good. Uh, again, let's go to the squad then. Best player was Rafina. Uh, 10 goals, 9 assists. Biggest goal scorers was Rodrigo with 26. Calvin Phillips with 12. Uh, Klitsch and Rafina again, 10 at a piece. Biggest creators, Harrison and Rafina again, 12 and 9. Full numbers for the underdogs. They're 98. So again, that's not too bad for a team like Leeds. That's pretty good. Uh, 41 conceded as well so they haven't conceded a lot either i know they're not in as many competitions as um as man you were but yeah 41 not too bad for a team like leeds if we go to the data hub with leeds then again on the general performance guys that's really really good for a team like leeds for a mid table to low team um you can't ask for anything much more than that you're outside the averages on a lot of cases as well uh, last match passes for these then so yeah this this last game was against southampton uh, you can see the center backs are sitting pretty deep everyone else is really really forward though um a couple of players there just uh a little bit tight together which i don't normally like if you've got two players occupying the same space that means you've got space that's not being used and you're wasting a player so yeah but again that's only one game guys it could uh, could change but yeah, not bad for Leeds. All right, so let's go to the actual uh, Premier Division. Let's have a look at the full stats then. So goals, it was actually Manu and Leeds that did score the most goals. 125 for Manu. Leeds got 83, matched with Liverpool. Uh, pass completions, is the passing all right? No one there. Uh, best possession then. So Manu were in the category top eight, uh, came sixth with 52%. Normally the case with really attacking tactics, attacking mentalities, attacking duties, you kind of lose out on possession and pass completion because you're attacking, all right? You're, ris you're risky. And when you're risky, you lose the ball more. It's common sense, I think. <laughs> Uh, fewest conceded though, not too bad. Manu obviously came first there, only conceding 32. Uh, Leeds is there as well, sixth, only conceding 37. So overall, not too bad for both teams. If we go to uh, France now then, PSG and Brest, how did they do? So here we are then, as usual, PSG always wins the league. We just like to see the big numbers, I say it every time, guys. Uh, Brest though, they are the underdogs, all right? They came fourth, 65 points. They're only six points behind potentially maybe coming second or third depending on goal difference but in my eyes that's not too bad if we go to the player stats then Mbappe came first with goals 35 um no one else there average ratings Ramos 7.71 uh, Neymar and Messi and then assists you got Messi again with 19 Neymar and Hakimi player of the matches no one there apart from Neymar coming joint second and then Bizarre Clean sheets for Brest. All right, so there's no clean sheets for PSG, which is a shame. Obviously, you would think there would be with who they are. But uh, clean sheets for Bizarre. Brest goalkeeper, 16 coming first. Nice one. So PSG's competitions then, 
They won everything. Obviously, we knew they already won the Champions League, but they won the French Cup, the Trophy Stage Champions, and the League. So they end up getting the quadruple bars. All four cups that are available to them in the first season. So nice one there. Uh, if we go straight to the squad, then so best player was best player was Ramos in every competition. Twenty one goals for a centre back. To bear in mind, he's got incredible penalties taken. He's got incredible free kicks, and he's a big lad for those near post corners. So he's going to pick up quite a few goals doing them. Um, but yeah, he's done really, really well. Uh, biggest creator in the team was Neymar, uh, getting twenty three, and Messi getting twenty two. But after, and back, I did. I looked at the best player then. Anyway, biggest goal scorers. Mbappe with 41, Icardi with 31, Messi with 28, Ramos with 21, Neymar, Di Maria. All right, again, a lot of players picking up a lot of goals because you've got such an attacking tactic. Um, full numbers, guys. 208. So that's even better than Manu. It would be they're in a bit of an easier league and they are an elite team. Uh, but regardless, for a one-player tactic, for a one-striker tactic, should I say, uh, 208 is out of this world. So that's awesome to see. 56 goals conceded. And uh, yeah, so data map. Let's have a look at these last match passes. So we had a look at Manu. Now this is the pass map for PSG again in the same game. So you can see that it's actually pretty similar. You can see the shadow striker sitting behind the striker there. The two attacking volantes. Uh, you can see Pereira sits back a little bit more on the left-hand side. You've got uh, Gay here doing really, really well, uh, a little bit more forward. But as usual, it looks nice. It's passed nice. It's consistent across all areas. You're not favoring at one side. And um, yeah, it looks pretty nice. So, And the inside forwards, again, with Mbappe. And uh, Di Maria lot getting forward and using those runs. Because no doubt that if any of these guys get the ball here and these are in the positions that they're in, they're going to be sprayed to them and they're going to get through. Especially with Mbappe. Uh, normally Mbappe would be using his advanced forward. I would. He scores more goals that way than an inside forward. But he scored quite a lot of goals. But he did rotate between striker, inside forward, everything like that. So, yeah, he probably would have scored more if we set him in stone to be the uh, advanced forward. But he did really well at the end of the day. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. General performance is, as usual, awesome. <laughs> it's a good word, isn't it? Awesome. Um, yeah, the verse scored a lot. Look at that. Over four goals. Over four goals on the averages for PSG. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So let's go to Brest. They were the underdogs. All right. And to finish fourth, it's a shame that it's not in the English League, Premier League, so we would have got Champions League football. But being a little bit low in the coefficients, they've only got European League. So, yeah, Brest did really, really well. Got, obviously, the uh, the one player, Bizzard, in the uh, top three on the individuals. How did they do competitions-wise? We knew they didn't win, but they did get to the quarterfinal of the French Cup. So, not bad for Brest. Let's go straight to the squad. Uh, not all right on the average ratings. Not everyone uh, doing well. But normally, a good, a good average rating is about 6.9. All right, that's not bad. Right, everyone else is obviously above is, is, is a bonus. Uh, Mooney being your best player, 19 goals, 4 assists. Biggest creator was Del Castillo, getting 14 right there. Uh, full numbers for Bresson was only 67. So they might have finished in a great position. Uh, 67 is a little bit low, even for underdogs. Uh, but we'll just have a quick look at the league, see how they did overall. So when it comes to goals scored then, was obviously PSG first, uh, getting 155. More than double second place, bear in mind. Uh, but Brest was there in the top eight, all right, 60. It's not norm. Sometimes with a really good tactic, the underdogs like Leeds, um, they end up pretty high. And seventh for Brest isn't too bad. Fewest conceded, obviously, PSG doing really well. But Brest were really good in that area as well, coming second, only conceding 41. Best pass completion, is anyone there? Again, no. And possession, is anyone there? PSG at this time on possession, not bad. Third place for a really attacking tactic to still be in the top eight, top three, even for a good team, uh, is really, really good. So yeah, nice. PSG then, Brest coming seventh with 50%. Not bad at all. Lovely. So uh, let's have a look at their data hub then. Uh, this is the general performance for Brest. It's probably what you would expect from an underdog team uh, last match passes for them that's that's actually pretty decent you've got the shadow striker sitting pretty deep but everywhere else is really really good to be fair it's a solid shape it's a nice looking pass map yeah nice one breast all right so let's go to spain then atletico madrid and velocano a top team and underdog team how did they do <sighs> All right, so Atletico Madrid with just three points. One game behind Valencia, guys. It was so close to winning. Um, 
yeah, it's a shame. But Vallecano, uh, not bad. Considering they are newly promoted, uh, they are super underdogs and they came sixth. They've done really well. And as you can see, you've got quite a lot of players in the top threes as well. Uh, let's go to the lower leagues of England. Middlesbrough just went out in the playoffs, unfortunately. And it was the playoff final. It was the playoff final. All right, so if we go to the playoff final, look, 2-1 against Sheffield United. That's a shame. Bolton, again, playoffs. Playoff final. 4-1 against Oxford. Such a shame. They get, they get so close. So close. But not far enough. Tranmere then in League 2. Hey, there we go. They ended up getting promoted. So overall, the tactic actually did really well. Uh, top dogs obviously finished where they should do. Scored a lot of goals. Got great stats. Underdogs or middle team uh, middle teams did really well. Finishing for Champions League or European football stages with Brest and Leeds and Vallecano as well. Um, so yeah, overall, not bad at all, Nap. All right, so this is the goodbye tactic. You can find it on FM Scout, guys. So go over there, download it, and you can see many other tactics there as well. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to comment if you are using it, and it's doing absolutely fantastic for you. Um, and don't forget to go and visit my channel as well. I'm Tucker Jobs. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. See you later. Bye.